has been found guilty of murdering seven babies and trying to kill six others at a public hospital in northern England. Lucy Letby is Britain's most prolific child serial killer, responsible for unimaginable grief. Europe correspondent John Paul Gonzo reports, and a warning, some viewers may find the details in this story distressing. Evil unmasked. Hello, Lucy, is it? Yes. Hello, my name's... This is Lucy Letby in 2018, arrested for crimes beyond comprehension. From 2015 to 2016, she was a nurse at a Chester hospital, which saw an unexplained rise in the number of deaths in the neonatal ward. The common thread was Letby. She preyed on vulnerable newborns by poisoning them with insulin. Others were injected with air or force-fed milk. Some endured multiple attacks before they died. She perverted her learning and weaponised her craft to inflict harm, grief and death. The 33-year-old was found guilty of murdering seven babies and trying to kill six others. This couple, who we cannot identify, are the parents of twin brothers who were among the 13 victims. I think she's a hateful human being. She's taken everything from us, absolutely everything. Compounding their grief are claims Lucy Letby could have been stopped sooner, preventing more deaths. Doctors on the ward repeatedly raised concerns about Letby, but management took no action. Instead, those doctors were ordered to apologise to the nurse. When she was eventually arrested, a search of her bedroom uncovered hundreds of hospital records and handwritten notes, including this one, I am evil. I did this, it read. Lucy Letby also sent a condolence card to parents of one of the babies she killed and took a photo. Parents were exposed to her morbid curiosity and her fake compassion. Too many of them returned home to empty baby rooms. Police have now widened their investigation to review neonatal cases at other hospitals where Lucy Letby previously worked. Detectives are looking into 4,000 admissions over a number of years to identify more potential victims. Lucy Letby, who is now Britain's most prolific child serial killer, will be sentenced on Monday. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First, London. Californians are battening down the hatches as Hurricane Hillary heads for the south of the state. Sandbags are being prepared in car parks for residents worried about flooding. Authorities say the risks are still high despite predictions Hillary will be downgraded to a tropical storm when she hits. Hurricane Hillary is expected to create significant rain, possible flash flooding, severe winds, storm surge, dangerous surf, marine conditions and even possibly tornadoes. Hurricanes and tropical storms are very rare in California. The last time one made landfall in the south of the state was in Long Beach in 1939. On the other side of the country, tornadoes have badly damaged dozens of Rhode Island homes, ripped power poles from the ground and blacked out several towns. One tornado was strong enough to blow a car off a highway. Firefighters rushed to help the shocked but otherwise uninjured driver. Storms and heavy rain have been battering New England for weeks, but these are the first reported tornadoes of the season. An official deadline to leave towns threatened by two massive Canadian wildfires has passed as thousands of people crowd highways and airports trying to escape the infernos. The town of Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories is now only home to firefighters as they try to stop the blaze cresting hills near the settlement and burning it down. In British Columbia, almost 7,000 properties are under evacuation orders. Air tankers are flying missions day and night in an effort to slow the fire, but a forecast wind change and tinder dry conditions have made the situation very active and very unpredictable, according to local officials. The Spanish Air Force and its specialist water bombing planes have been rushed to Tenerife to fight raging wildfires there. This is the view from one of those planes as it makes a bombing run across the firegrounds. 
Almost 8,000 people have been evacuated as the worst fires in decades burn uncontrolled across the north of the island. A historic meeting between traditional foes has resulted in a stronger bond than expected and damning statements against China. President Biden hosted the leaders of Japan and South Korea at Camp David. Despite stressing the summit wasn't about China, the trio released a statement condemning Beijing's dangerous and aggressive moves in the South China Sea. This is not about a day, a week or a month. This is about decades and decades of relationships that we're building. China has responded, saying this new alliance will spark vigilance and opposition. President Biden is hoping to meet President Xi later this year. Donald Trump appears to have listened to advice from his lawyers and cancelled a media briefing on election interference scheduled for Tuesday. The former president says his lawyers will use a 100-page report full of what he calls irrefutable and overwhelming evidence of fraud in court filings instead. His Washington, D.C. legal team is hoping the judge listens to them, asking Tanya Chutkin to delay his trial until April 2026, almost 18 months after the next presidential election. Judge Chutkin has said she'll set a trial date at the next hearing in just over a week. X, formerly known as Twitter, could be banned from Apple's App Store and Google Play if Elon Musk's latest idea to remove the blocking function goes through. Musk claims the ability to block people from feeds and messages makes no sense, and Twitter's founder, Jack Dorsey, agrees. Musk instead wants users to be able to mute others, but their messages will still appear on feeds. The ability to block abusive users is a condition of the app being carried by Apple and Google.